Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Peter Zorn, your narrator for today's ceremony. On behalf of Colonel Derek Iwanigo, Commandant, Officer Training School, we welcome you to the graduation ceremony for Officer Training School Class 2415 and 2417 Alpha. I would like to begin with a brief review of this morning's ceremony. In just a few moments, both Class 2415 and 2417 will march in, followed by the arrival of the official party and the presentation of the warriorship from Class 2415 to Class 2417. Today's graduates will be in their service dress uniform, symbolizing their ceremonial duties for today. The junior members will be outfitted in their operational field uniform, reflecting their readiness to embrace the challenges ahead. To maintain proper decorum and respect, we ask that you abide by the following protocols. There will be times you will be asked to stand. During those times, please stand and render the appropriate courtesies. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. We ask that civilian guests stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may either render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. In addition, please reserve respect during the oath of office. During these oaths, officers pledge their lives to support and defend the Constitution and our country. I will be providing cues throughout the event to guide you. Today's ceremony is a celebration of the achievements of these graduating officers. It is also a ceremony that both teaches and appreciates our Air and Space Force military heritage. Drill is an essential part of military history, a prominence that rests on the fact that its fundamental purpose was to prepare troops for battle. For the most part, drill procedures practiced in the past were identical to the tactical maneuvers employed on the battlefield. It was this aspect of drill which made it such an important part of training. Even today, drill remains a necessary and useful training activity for instilling discipline, precision, and esprit de corps. 200 years ago, General Washington enlisted the assistance of Baron von Steuben, a distinguished Prussian officer, to help instill discipline in his fledgling army. Baron von Steuben arrived at Valley Forge in February of 1778, facing an army of several thousand undisciplined, half-starved men in rags. To correct these conditions, he set to work immediately to teach the discipline of drill to a model company of 120 selected men. These warriors modeled the way as they learned to respond to commands without hesitation.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invitation given by Chaplain Douglas. Thank you, Chaplain John Douglas. Please be seated. The reviewing official for today's parade is the Commander, 187, Maintenance Street, in Alley Field, Alabama Air National Guard, Colonel Clayton E. Thompson. Accompanying him is his wife, Mrs. Erica Thompson, and their children, Braddock, Beckham, Elena, Ariana, and Brickham. The Commandant's Officer Training School, Colonel Derek Iwaniko. The Acting Senior Enlisted Leader, Officer Training School, Master Master Sergeant Mark Shanai. <laughs> we are honored to have with us the following distinguished guests. Commander Gene M. Holmes Center for Officer Accessions and Citizen Development, Colonel Joseph L. Sheffield and his wife, Mrs. Sarah Sheffield. And Commander Ch Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Jennifer McKean. <laughs> the Commander, 217th Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Sharon Harris and Senior Enlisted Leader, Master Sergeant Candace Davis. The Commander, 24th Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Gregory Jackson and Senior Enlisted Leader Technical Sergeant Samuel Anderson. The Commander, 22nd Support Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Randy Sakale. We also welcome other commanders, commandants, command chiefs, senior leaders, chiefs, staff, and guests who have joined us on this special occasion. We hope you enjoy the ceremony. <laughs> uh, 
As part of today's ceremony, we also recognize the achievements of those who are about to send from lower class to upper class at Officer Training School by awarding the Warrior Chip. Officers, you may proceed. Veto! Tent! Hot! Pops! Today, the warrior chip signifies a trainee's elevation to officer training school upperclassmen. Additionally, it represents the culminating event for the medical officers graduating the abbreviated class. For these soon-to-be upper-class trainees, the journey to this point has been rigorous and demanding. They have persevered facing challenges that tested their physical, mental, and emotional limits. They have practiced leadership, developed their decision-making skills, and demonstrated unwavering commitment to becoming warrior-minded leaders of character. But today is not just about celebrating their growth as officers. It's about recognizing the character that lies beneath the uniform. It's about acknowledging the attributes that have brought them to this moment. Professionalism, communication, warfighting, leadership, and mission execution. These officers have chosen a path that demands more than knowledge. It demands a duty that goes beyond oneself. It requires them to be leaders, to inspire confidence in their fellow airmen and guardians, and to uphold and exemplify the values we hold dear. As they transition to upper class, they are not just progressing in their training, they are becoming a part of a legacy that extends through generations of officers who have served with honor and distinction. They are joining a select group of individuals who have answered the call of duty, who have been entrusted with the incredible responsibility of serving and leading our airmen and guardians to defend our freedoms and win our nation's wars. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the newest recipients of the Warrior Chip, Class 2417. The commander of airmen for today's ceremony is Second Lieutenant Matthew Newberg.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of our national anthem. Training School, United States Air Force, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Subject, Honor Flight, Honor Squadron, and Commandant's Challenge winners, Class 2415. Lieutenant Paul J. Smith, flight that exhibited the best combined average order of metrics and leader of character attributes, earns the title Honor Flight. This award recognizes the Honor Flight's demonstrated capacity to live with honor, lift others, and elevate performance of their teams. The Honor Flight Streamer is awarded to Flight 218 for excellence as a flight in academic studies, military training, and physical condition. Signed, Colonel Derek Iwanico. United States Air Force Commandant Officer Training School. The Honor Squadron Streamer is awarded to the Mustang Squadron for excellence as a squadron in academic studies, military training, and physical conditioning. Signed, Colonel Derek Iwanico, United States Air Force, Commandant, Officer Training School.
The Commandant's Challenge winner is awarded to Flight 218 for possessing courage, resilience, and hardiness of spirit, establishing in their inner cause the virtues we must exemplify through blood and sweat in the spectrum of developing as leaders. Sir, I present the command. March to command and review. Staff, order, arms. Staff, change post. Heart. Give your squadrons order, arms. graduating today and passing your review have accomplished a feat of immense They have led the way to the Department of the Air Force's newest and most transformative leadership development course, designed to produce warrior-minded leaders of character, committed to our oath, values, and training. We observe the graduating officers with their expanded knowledge and experience, taking the lead in the ceremony of passing the year. They confidently march, committed to our core values, of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Today, we not only celebrate individual achievements, but also the collective strength of our military family. As the colors pass through the scene area, please stand alongside us and join us in honoring the traditions that unite us all and inspire the next generation to reach even greater heights. The military training instructors passing a review are charged with establishing precision, self-control, and discipline required within the military force. The military training instructors are led by Technical Sergeant Hines, Technical Sergeant Jenkins, and Technical Sergeant Sheridan. Leading today's parade is the Commander of Airmen, 2nd Lieutenant Matthew Newberger, hometown Evanston, Illinois. The 
the H squadron, consisting of the Gold Hawks and Hoyas, is led by Second yeah. Lieutenant Kyle Gordon, from hometown Tucson, Arizona.
space force are the world's preeminent forces in air, space, and cyberspace. We maintain that distinction by securing our objective of global vigilance, reach, power, and remaining true to our vision statement. The world's greatest air and space forces powered by airmen and guardians fueled by innovation. Through shared values, key capabilities, and upholding our creed, we continue to achieve our mission and aim high in all we do. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remain standing while the Officer Training School Class 2415 recites the Airman's Creed, followed by the Oath of Office administered by Colonel Thompson. I am an American Airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American Airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. I am an American Airman, guardian of freedom and justice. My nation's sword and shield is century and avenger. I defend my country with my life. I am an American Airman, wingman, leader, warrior. I will never leave the air behind. I will never falter, and I will not fail. Colonel Thompson will administer the federal oath of office to the Air and Space Force officers. Graduates, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I state your full name. Having been appointed your rank. Having been appointed second lieutenant. In the United States Air or Space Force. In the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Graduates, whether you serve for just a few years or for 30, your service puts you in an elite group of Americans who stood tall and accepted this same oath to serve their country. That is something you will be able to hold on to for the rest of your life. With that, I want to say, Congratulations to you all. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you to all the families. And to each one of you, officers dismissed!